first thing I look to do is, is where I put, place my feet. So if on a normal shot, I'll be quite square on, so left leg just in front of the right leg, but my chest and my body is square on to my shot here, and I'm down on the shot, and that allows me to go back. Well, what I tend to do for the break, I'll go a little bit more side on. So I will have the, the left leg now quite a bit in front of my right leg. I've turned my whole body, I've tilted it around almost to a 45 degree angle. And that just opens up my, my chest, which allows me to get my cue arm back much further, a much bigger sensation of being able to go back further with my cue arm. The second thing I do with the break is I have a real, there's always a sensation that I want my head to move on the shot. I want my head to jump up on the shot when I'm trying to re hit. When you go back to try and hit it really hard, you're almost jumping, trying to get that head and everything follows the head. So, and I've always talked about trying to keep the head as still as possible on the shot to make sure you get good quality of contact on the cue ball. So what I do is I will, rather than having my cue, my head on the cue, right on the cue, I will raise my head up. So my head is say a few inches above the cue so somewhere here, so I've got that little bit more clearance. So instead, it won't give me the sensation of wanting to jump up because I'm almost in a, a bit more of an upright position already. And the third thing I do, and probably the biggest fundamental difference I have on the break shot to any other shot, is the sensation of really following through on the shot. So on a normal shot, I would probably look to follow through to a certain point, maybe somewhere there. So we are going past the cue ball, but we're not going miles past the cue ball. When we go back for the big powerful break, if we only allow the cue to come through, you know, a few inches past the cue ball, then we are almost decelerating at moment of impact. We've already lost some of our power. So what I try to do is I really try to, to exaggerate the follow through. I want to feel like my cue is really driving through, almost like I'm trying to reach the pack with my cue. And that will mean that when I'm striking the cue ball, I'm striking the cue ball at extreme, at the moment of extreme acceleration and extreme power. Uh, and that means I'm going to get much more power going through the pack. You never actually reach the pack with your cue. You just want that sensation of really getting through the pack. Now let's see if I can put those three fundamentals together and really develop and drive a, a massive break. So more side on, head just above the cue and really accentuate and, and, and exaggerate that follow through. Well, there you go, really powerful break. This is wrong. Aiming to the point of contact between the balls. <clears throat> this is the right way. Place an imaginary cue ball to the point of contact and aim through the center of it. This is wrong. <laughs> this is correct. More tips and tricks for the beginning pool player. If somebody ends up blocking your eight ball shot into the side pocket and you need to make that eight, hit that eight ball and just miss that one and hit the cushion and see what happens. All right, and I'm going to do this for the next 48 hours. Anybody that follows me, I'm going to follow you right back starting when I post this video. More tips and tricks for the beginning pool player. Let's say you're in a situation where your opponent puts you behind their three ball and you need to make that 14 to set yourself up for that eight ball. It's not an easy shot, but with enough practice, you can elevate your cue and hit bottom right English on that cue ball off this rail and it should divert back between these two balls 
down the rail and into the 14. Let me see if I can do it. Perfect setup for the eight ball. Remember to like, comment, follow, let me know what you guys want to see, and I will try my best to explain it. If I'm not explaining something fully and you're still confused, comment, let me know. I'll break it down a little more for you. No spin. Top spin. Back spin. Right spin. Left spin. Top right, cheat the pocket to the left. Top right, cheat the pocket to the right. Top left, cheat the pocket to the right. Top left, cheat the pocket to the left. Low left, cheat the pocket to the left. Low left, cheat the pocket to the right. Low right, cheat the pocket to the right. Low right, cheat the pocket to the left. Magic spin. This is wrong. This is right. Right, so I just want to give you an example here. So normally, if you played this plain ball, you would kind of look for a ghost ball in this area here. So this is where you need, if you come around and had a look at the shot, and had a look where you needed to hit for it to go straight in the pocket, that would be where your imaginary ghost ball would be. Now the difference is when you play with side, I just play the shot plain ball. When I'm playing at plain ball like this, I'm aiming for the ghost ball and I'm just pushing through, yeah? big difference when you're playing with side, depending on how fast you're playing or how, how, how quick you're playing the shot. So normally where I'd aim here with the ghost ball, playing ball for it to go into this pocket, if I'm playing with left hand side so that when it hits the bottom cushion, yeah, if I'm playing with left hand side it'll hit this bottom cushion and it will come back up left. If I'm playing it with right hand side when it hits the bottom cushion it will shoot off right. Okay, but when you're aiming with left hand side, I'm not aiming for where the ghost ball would be. I'm almost aiming slightly to the left. And that varies depending on how how much you're, sorry, how quick you're playing the, the white ball. So let me give you an example. So if I play this softly, I'm probably aiming roughly here. This is something that you'll have to do like constant repetition so that you can gauge. Every cue is different. Every white ball comes off different off people's cues. So you have to learn for yourself. But here on the left hand side is roughly where I'll be aiming. So when I play with left hand side, my white ball, my white ball pushes that way, which means that it deflects slightly. So I have to aim there. So when it goes right ways like this, it turns slightly and it ends up being in the center. Let me give you an example. So I'm aiming roughly here, so by the time it gets there, it hits that, and then it checks up off the bottom cushion. Here is one hack that will immediately help your pool game. When most people line up their shots, they have a couple practice swings. Those practice swings, will come all the way back, and then they'll smash it. 
That's not what you wanna do. Begin slow, speed up, and hit it. Don't just smash it. Build up the speed, and then follow through, and it's gonna completely transform your accuracy.